not here today, so I'm going to be kind of keeping tabs to see if she can jump in and maybe do a shout out from where she's at. But we have such a fantastic uh, topic today. Jim Bonnerdale is here with us. He is actually, I, I want to do a big shout out to him because he's always been here supporting women in drones and what we're doing here. And he's come to our Coffee Connection all the time. He's so so knowledgeable in the industry. We are so lucky to have him here to share about copyright information today. What a great topic, right? So Tim, I am going to go ahead and make you spotlight for everyone. And we thank you very much for joining us today. Awesome. Well, thanks uh, for that super kind introduction and good morning, everybody. I'm seeing tons of familiar faces. You guys know who I am. You know how I roll. Uh, I appreciate you, you tuning in. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this is that it seems to me, I mean, in my uh, professional life, this subject has recently reared its ugly head. Um, and it's uh, copyrights are generally one of those things that it's not a problem until it's a problem. And if you don't have it taken care of, it becomes a big problem. And protecting our work is it, it, it's it, it can be very important uh, we may be on missions collecting imagery or data that has potential for uh, distribution potential for profit those types of things um, and, I, and I'll, I'll start with a quick little story um, we were uh, we were soliciting work to a local uh, contractor out here. And uh, I knew they were working a job site that I was actually working. And uh, so we, we approach him, I, we go up to him, we set an appointment, we, we walk in the door, we're meeting, everything's friendly and blah, blah, blah. And we're talking about what we do and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the job site supervisor, the job foreman says, well, you know, I don't think this is gonna work for us because we get everything we need free. And I went, hmm, well, who's giving it to you free? And uh, what we learned was that the primary company we were selling to was reselling our work. So we were we had a nice package of deliverables, and this person, this company, was uh, soliciting those and would take our body of work and resell. So the example is, and, and these are just discussionary numbers. But let's say we sell them a package for a thousand dollars. Well, he goes to four people and he resells that same package for the same thousand dollars. So who's truly making more money on my work, our work, the work, right? So there is one example where copyright, licensing rights, and things like that can come into play to protect you, the media content producer, okay? So Copyright, let me let me back this up. And before I get into my little piece, I want to make sure everybody understands I am not a copyright attorney. <laughs> I do not play one on TV, and I did not sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So <laughs> I will share with you the information that I learned while I set myself off to figure this out and to determine whether or not uh, high tech needed copyrights, needed to file for copyright, and how that would actually work out. So you know, one of the things you start with is the rights of a copyright owner. Uh, when you have a copyright, what is what are the rights? What are you actually getting done? What does a copyright do? Um, and I have a little text here, so it sounds like I'm reading for a minute. It's because I am. Uh, the owner of a copyright has the exclusive rights to reproduce, distribute uh, copies for sale or otherwise of publicly or are included publicly performance, displays, creations, of de, uh, creations, derivative work, things that you make from your copyrighted work. Um, you also have the right to authorize others to do the same. So when you own the copyright, it includes its um, usage publicly or not, uh, create creations from it, derivatives of it. Let's say you take a sunset shot and you put that sunset shot into something else, like uh, maybe um, uh, maybe a pamphlet, and you want that sunset shot in. That's still part of it. It's still inclusive because it's a derivative of that. 
That's what a copyright is. Copyright is not a trademark. Um, and you know, one of the things I, I look over here and, you know, Eric, I, I see it there. If, if I go a direction, you know something to pop your hand up because I know you are a wealth of knowledge in this area too. So don't hesitate to jump in. Um, so copyrights give you that protection to prevent others from using your work, right? For whatever reason. How long does a copyright last? Well, copyrights are one of those things where, you know, by design, it pretty much is as long as you're alive, right? Copyright will take care of you plus, I think, 70 years. Yeah. Um, copyright protection lasts the entire lifetime of the creator plus an additional 70 years. Uh, for work that was made for hire, anonymously or using a pseudonym, copyright protection lasts for 95 years from the year of first production or 120 years from the year of creation. So as a general rule of thumb, copyrights last a long time, right? You probably are not going to outlive your copyright. <laughs> now that we start to think about, okay, so we know what, what a copyright, what my rights are and how long it lasts. We gotta start to talk about why you should register a copyright. This is the biggest gray area of all. Why do I need a copyright? Um, and the reason why it's the biggest gray area of all is because A, copyright is not all inclusive. You don't get yourself or your work copyrighted and that means everything you do is under copyright. Nope, that's not how it works. It, when copyrights first came out, they actually only copyrighted publicly published materials. So it had to have been published to be copyrighted. And uh, that kind of uh, uh, defines early law because isn't that scary? You got to put it out there before you can copyright it. Um, so why should you register a copyright? While your work is copyrighted, is under copyright protection, as soon as it's created, there are many benefits to registering a copyright. You'll establish a public record of the copyright and you'll get a certificate of your registration. And you also may, and with those two is where the legal authority steps in for illegal use, okay? Without a copyright, you really don't have much to stand on as far as illegal use. Now there of course are variances and I have, I know people, uh, it, that have examples of finding their work used someplace. And often it's just a simple communication to the person that's using it saying, hey, look, that's my image. You're using it illegally, blah, blah, blah. And something can be worked out from that. Either it gets taken down or they give you some type of compensation for it. I have seen that happen a lot. But the truth is, is at that point, you're only operating on the good faith of the perpetrator using your work because without a copyright you have no legal definite no legal basis to take them to court over it okay so that kind of brings in the real consideration of what's it worth at what point in time is a document or a body of work worthy of the expense time and effort to copyright. If you're doing work, and uh, and I, I like this example, and I certainly don't mean to belittle this example, but let's say you're doing real estate work for a local realtor, okay? Does that work need to be co uh, copyrighted? Maybe not. What's the value of that work? What's the value of that work once that house is sold? And what's the likelihood of it being truly used for a substantial profit? probably pretty low. Whereas if you are recording a, uh, I'm thinking of another one, uh, recording something for a performance artist, uh, you're, you're, you're flying drones at a concert and your images of this big name concert person could be used and, and now there's some dollar money that's, that might be a reason to start to investigate copywriting. Now, copywriting also, can play a couple of roles with who are you working for and what are their requirements. As an independent pilot, where you go out and you're shooting uh, data, collecting imagery, things like that for someone, if, if it's your company, it's your company, you get to specify. In the event you are working for somebody, uh, that becomes, now you've gone into that difference of this is a, this body of work is for hire 
and it's probably in your working agreement that anything you create uh, under the auspices of that employment is owned by the company. And at that point in time, you're the hired cameraman. These aren't, these aren't productions of yours. Uh, you are a, a camera operator. Okay. Um, so when it, it comes time to having to do that legal enforcement and, and taking someone to court over it, you kind of want to make sure you're doing all of this effort for a series of images and data that's worth it, that you've paid for. Um, one of the things you are able to sue for includes, you know, the attorney fees and all that kind of for infringement, profits that they might have gotten and all that type of things. That's where this comes in because if someone's making a lot of money on your work, that truly is your money. Um, why, why register? Well, registering a copyright again isn't free. There are plenty of places to do it online. I think LegalZoom does it. Uh, there are a couple of these other online places. And of course, there are copyright uh, attorneys that I would highly recommend you have an association with before you decide to go this route, because uh, you're not just listening to this guy, hopefully. Um, <laughs> listen to that copyright attorney, because there are, there are a couple of different types. Uh, and I want to make sure that, that, you get, that I get that. Um, and then get back to the back to the history a little bit. We talked about that the work had to be published first, and that you had to copyright it. So let's put that in in our example. Let's say you're doing uh, construction progress. Well, you go out and you do a bunch of pictures, and you copyright those pictures. Well, luckily under that copyright, that includes all the additional uh, work that you might do at that site, and all of the deliverables that you might produce from those imagery also unlike typically taking a picture of a sunset and finding that picture you took on a postcard somewhere, right? Um, that one image can be copyrighted. Now what we're really talking about is a bunch of images that make a single product. Uh, when I do ortho mosaics, I'm often taking 3000 pictures and I copyright the body of work. So anything I create from that uh, 2D map, 3D map, orthos, things like that, that I create from that work is still under that copyright. But copywriting, uh, there, that often led to a problem where you were at the site, you're doing the work, and you're trying to copyright materials that you have. Um, I think it was in 1978, there were some changes to the copyright rulings that, uh, here I have a little note here, I'll make sure I, I get this correct. Uh, unpublished works, uh, that's what it is. We're talking about unpublished works. Um, unpublished works are those which have not yet distributed, been distributed in any matter. And prior to 1978, copyright protection generally was only available for produced, published works. So then there was a new rule in 1978. And that's the big one here that uh, talks about there is numbers attached, how long attached, that type of things. So the new rule is, is that you can copyright something and, uh, and and it's i almost want to uh, consider it like uh credits right you buy copyright credits you copyright your body of work and for each copyright you typically get 750 copyrightable images so let's say if i am doing a job site i will copyright the work from that site and then i have 750 types of published images that I can include in that copyright. Not the 3000 pictures I took directly overhead making a map, but the map itself, the ortho itself is an image. So, or a, a panel, a panel of 28 stitched images. It's the produced panel that is the copyrighted image. Um, and all those others are inclusive of, included of that. So, um, that's, that is a change, you know, not too long ago, like I said, in 1978, that made a big difference to the type of work that we do. So you can copyright your body of work or copyright a group or a project and have these copyright credits, if you will, as you produce. And again, it's important that you make sure that when you're spending these credits or applying these copyrighted uh, copyrights to these documents, images, or productions, that you, uh, you're you doing it in something that has the potential to pay for itself. Uh, as, as I said earlier, it's never a problem until it's a problem that's a big problem. You can have a great relationship with a company, and everything's great, handshakes, smiling faces, a lot of discussion, 
business is business and it's different. If someone starts selling your images and profiting from your work, you need to protect yourself and you need to have that. So um, when you, our rule of thumb, as we have discovered is that we need to start, we are copywriting those types of things when we're playing with the bigger players, with the bigger companies, um, companies that have the potential uh, for litigation. So one of the things you don't ever wanna do is you never wanna take someone to court that doesn't have any money, right? If you're gonna to go to court over something, you wanna be making sure that you're, the person you're taking uh, litigation against is, is worthy of that uh, compensation. So it's a internal self-decision that you need to make on your own about when is it worth copywriting? Is a project worth copywriting? Or are you uh, pr willingly providing these things to the open por uh, public? One of the things I forgot and I didn't mention earlier is copyrights can be applied after the fact. If you have a, a series of image or data, you can copyright something up to five years after its creation, after it was uh, uh, brought to the table or after you started working on said project. So uh, this is that that rule falls right into play for us. We didn't have that copyright. We find out person might be selling stuff. In, we can copyright it. And then, it, then all of that rule applies to us right instantly there. So those are, um, there are copy, I believe that the copyright rules as a whole are really pretty um, favorable to the content producer. Uh, copywriting is um, one of those things that's not hard to do and literally protects your likenesses, images, and things like that. So if you have, uh, if you have projects that are up there on that top of the scale, you want to make sure that you are protecting yourself um, and having a copyright for your company, you can make the statements like all rights reserved on those images. Um, and it's far better than just a watermark stating that you own the image, right? That the watermark stating you own the image is easily cropped out. <laughs> um, where we talk about, um, there was another thing too, is that if you are using uh, classic imagery that you are copywriting, uh, create a little template and don't hesitate to put that little pasted uh, copyright, blah, 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 in your metadata of an image. So if the, if the image is grabbed online and someone looks at the metadata, they still see that it's copyrighted and it doesn't have to have that C over any logo on the image itself. That, that is also sufficient and that works really well. Can I jump in, jump in right here real quick? Of course. Can you maybe give us a, a quick tip on how we would go about doing that? Yeah, I mean, what, copywriting? Yeah, putting that yeah. into the metadata. Just oh, like, into the metadata. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a couple, you know, there, there's, I mean, it depends that you're using a Mac or a PC. Uh, I actually have both a Mac and a PC because I find some tasks amazingly simple on a PC that I can't figure out on a Mac and vice versa. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about on a PC. Literally, all you have to do is just right click that image and bring up the properties and boom, all of that stuff pops up right there. All of the metadata pops right up. And on a PC, you can literally click in the box and edit the data. You can add that copyright protection information. You can add your contact information, but the lat long, the time, the vehicle type or the camera sensor type, all this stuff will be there automatically. For the life of me, I can't figure out how to do this on a Mac. <laughs> I still, I, I think I saw it one time, but I just can't just jump right back into doing it. Um, as le at least as easy as it is on a PC by just right clicking on the image. And another cool thing is you can actually select all of those images, like you were talking earlier. Yes, all 750 all or whatever. Mm -hmm. And do it in one batch load. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's nice too. There's a couple of questions and Eric has been so kind to be jumping in here as well. Awesome. Um, and uh, so there's a couple of questions that have popped up in here. I'm kind of scrolling up because there's been a lot of conversation. Okay, I just uh, what happens if the images or video for real estate you took for one real estate agent who then gets fired? How can you turn around and offer the next agent the work that you've done? Uh, you know, Sheila, that's a that's a pretty good question. But I would bet that your agreement's not with the agent. If the agent's with a company, that's where your agreement is. Um, they're going to be pretty smart about not letting an agent walk out the door with the keys to the shop. You know what I mean? They're not going to put anything in a single agent's lap that is proprietary or 
that if he left, they're going to be in trouble for? Nah, there, it's, if, if it's a, you're working for Remax. You're not working for Bob at Remax. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Also, um, Greg put in a message to me about the uh, Mac, right click, get the info, edit the info. Uh, he put that little. So it's still a right click on a Mac. How come I can't figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> me being a PC user, I'm on the same page. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so. So, so I do see Eric's comment about filing directly at the Library of Congress. Yes. Um, and I, I purposely kept that out, um, but not because it's right. It's certainly the most cost-effective way to go. I find it to be one of the most difficult things to do. Whereas, and, and I'm again not promoting. I'm just saying that there are these services out there that are fairly uh, reasonable. Uh, and and I'll just you know, LegalZoom is one. LegalZoom is one where you type in, "I want a copyright." Pop, 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 stuff comes up, click, 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 it kind of walks you through. Is it as in, in, in encompassing or as uh, thorough? Maybe not. Still gets the job done. But my point here is that I, I would suggest you go to those sites to learn about when you want to use a copyright. Uh, because they all give you those examples. Um, like the question I had, uh, what are the rights of the copyright owner? Um, I didn't copy this from them, but I think they all have those similar question and answer uh, frequently asked questions pages where they answer why they're so good and why you need a copyright and things like that. Uh, those are great sources of information, but absolutely, filing directly at the Library of Congress does take you out of a service. You're not paying a service to do it, you're doing it yourself. So sometimes there's value in that, and sometimes there's value in a service, somebody walking you through. Uh, and, and I'll mention this, I don't think for a second that the, the, the ones that I've referred to, these legal assistance websites are nearly as shady as if you type in FAA drone zone and you get 36 people calling themselves the FAA drone zone trying to get you $10. So <laughs> it's not quite that bad. So, um, and I don't know if you are planning to cover this coming up or not, but uh, can you tell us how somebody would know how their images might be out there being used? Well, there, that's a good one. Okay, so something that people should probably practice once in a while. And I don't know if, uh, if anybody follows me on Facebook, but not too long ago, uh, I had an episode. Remember, there was that game. Uh, what was it? Was it Concentration? Where they would flash an image and they would close it and you'd have to pick the other image. And if the two images matched, you'd win it. I don't know. For some reason, my brain works that way. And I saw an image that I said, man, I swear to God, I've seen this before, but something was different. And what it happened to be was a um, uh, caricature or an image of Snow White, Disney's Snow White from the movie. So it was the actress and it was one of the promotionals. She had this beautiful pose and it was Snow White. But I saw a picture that someone had professed as theirs and had a little signature on it and everything else. And I swear it's the same image. They changed the background. They changed her dress. They changed her hair from long hair to short hair, changed the makeup look, but oh my God, it's the same image. And that's what got me thinking about, holy smokes, people can just do a little tweak and take your work. And that's kind of what started this whole rabbit hole in the first place. Um, but I just saw it. So instead of you having to go to every picture in the world going, is that mine? Is that mine? Is that mine? Nope. Put your picture up, learn how to do a Google image search. And a Google image search, man, oh man, oh man. Uh, hopefully it always comes back with, can't find it. <laughs> but if it comes back with, look at how many of this is out there, uh-oh. Um, and you can truly see when something goes viral or your stuff gets shared because it, it propagates and it gets out there. So uh, if you haven't done it before, just go to Google, type in Google image search. It's going to take you to another page. You either you show it the image and you tell it, search the internet for that, and bada bing, bada boom, it comes up. It will catch slight deviations. Like if you've got a picture, a, a sunset picture, and you've changed the sky, and it's a big, bright orange sky, uh, might not catch that. There's too many variables. The algorithms aren't all there, so it might not catch that. Um, it's a good place to start, but I, I don't know. It, it's almost, you have to catch them red-handed. 
And uh, if anybody else goes online, I don't know if they caught uh, one of Vic's, Vic Moss's discussions yesterday. Uh, hey, you're talking about me. Yeah, there you are, Vic. <laughs> Share the story of over the stadium because I went back and didn't find that. They, they removed it. They, okay. I could, yep. Yeah, that was kind of my... it, was, it was the Rockies, so they have money. Yeah. Um, Colorado Rockies. Yeah. That's why they removed it because they have money. <laughs> <laughs> because they pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, they use something another client of mine. They're doing a co um, a co promotion for, and my client used it on their Instagram, and then so my so the Rockies took it from that and used it on their Instagram, yeah. and I sent them a takedown order. So so how did how did it get found? That was a, that was a question. You had. <laughs> another friend of mine who is a realtor, actually a former pastor of mine, put it took it from the Rockies page, and put it on his Facebook page. And so I saw it. I didn't realize it was him. I asked him where he got it, and he told me. Okay. And I actually told him to take it down, too, until I found out who it was. And I said, oh, you know, Dennis, you could keep it. I don't care. Right. Um, th that's, that's when I made the comment that, you know, I really appreciate us in this position because you have a relationship with that individual, and you're willing to make a concession just because of the mm -hmm. individual. And yeah. He's I a like good guy. that. And I joked online, he also baptized me, so I didn't let him use it. He was going to take my baptism back. <laughs> You're going to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the reason I wanted to chime in before you brought me up, um, in, if, if everybody, if anybody's using Adobe, they can actually have Bridge. That comes with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And you can have metadata templates in Bridge. I've oh. got, oh gosh, I probably have about 25 right now for, um, for, for repeat clients. And I just, I just pick all the images and, uh, and, and bridge, uh, go up, uh, gosh, I think it's under tools and obviously I'm driving, I'm not going to go look for it. Um, but it has metadata. You can replace or augment, uh, the metadata that's already on there. And he's driving <laughs> and boom, done. You can do free oh. images, up down another click and touch. Just as an FYI, your phone cut out just as you got to uh -oh. the really good part. Yeah, you got to the good part. <laughs> <laughs> Which part? Sorry. Um, you know, like a, the like part I said, just before you summarized. <laughs> Which summary? The metadata or Dennis? Yeah, the, the, the metadata. The metadata. Okay, yeah. So in Bridge, you pull up the folder, click on the folder, select all the images, and then there's a drop down menu. That says, um, and I can't remember which one it is. It's about two thirds of the way over from the left. Um, that basically says, you know, you can change, you can do metadata. Um, I have metadata templates. You just click it. So one click, drop down menu, click whatever metadata you want to change. Boom, it's all done automatically. It takes like two seconds, and all your metadata is done. Yeah, that's great. So that's an Adobe Bridge. Adobe. Very good. Nice. Great tip there. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we I, like okay, those so tips. Vic, on your way to Vegas, do not detour to any dealerships. <laughs> not I really don't want to. I really, really don't want to. It's up to the car. <laughs> no, my, no, I got a new car, so I'm okay. Uh, good for you. Hang on. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. For those of you who don't know, last time I went to Vegas for a drone conference, what, two years ago, I blew the engine out of my truck. Yeah. So, um, And I just passed where I blew up, so I'm okay. Oh, you're in your doubt. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Now I stopped to fly for a while, so that's why I didn't jump on right at nine o'clock. Awesome, awesome. Hey, well, that's all I got, Dad. Well, I appreciate you jumping in. I really do, and I, yeah, I know uh, that's why I really like this group because I, I, I checked out Eric's uh, post, and you know, I got to I got to be admit, Eric, I thought you were just trademarks, um, or, or patents. I'm sorry, but now that I see that you're trademarks and copyrights. What a wonderful thing to have this. And, and and I truly do appreciate the knowledgeable input, such as, I mean, Eric's clearly suggesting that you just go to Library of Congress and do it. Um, that, that That's probably good advice. I would. I, it's not I would, that I, hard. Yeah. It, it might and be I'm scary, I guess. Person, I'm a horrible person to get copyright advice on because I have never copyrighted an image in 32 years. <laughs> good thing you only say that here. Oh, Don't say that outside. <laughs> well, you know. I use, you know, like you said in your thing about the, the new rules, it, it's my copyright already. Yeah. It's just not filed. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Big difference. Yeah. I, I mean, need to, I, I know. Every time I hear one of these conversations, like, Vic, get off your butt and do it. And then I don't. Oh, 
But you know, let's let you go, let's go on the example that your most recent example still worked out favorably right. without a legal copyright. Yeah. So, right. And they haven't got back to me yet, so that's not over yet. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the check clears. No, it's not over till the check, check clears. involved. <laughs> right. I just want to fly during a game and they're being a holes about it. So I'm yeah. gonna be an a-hole back. Yeah, that can you oh, know, well. and I, I, as I was mentioning earlier, that's the difference when you are dealing with the bigger players, and it's business, right? They they drag their feet, they hold up. It's, mm -hmm. It is there's money involved. It's not unfortunately you're not dealing with your 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 friends in this case. So uh, protection right. is is a good idea. Yep, never a bad idea. Never a bad idea. Cool. And I do anything on social media. I do put a logo on. So mm -hmm. I do I do watermark it. Yep. And the, and the nice thing about that is if it's used without the watermark, that's intent. Right. So, so here's a question for you, Vic. What do you like better? Mm -hmm. Do you like uh, wallpapering it or just the logo in the corner? I, if you look at all, if you look at all my Instagram stuff, it's got my logo in the lower left corner and it's got DSPA logo in the lower right corner. Okay. Every single easily cropped out, easily, you know, the healing tool and, and Photoshop, boom, done. Yeah. But then that's intent. Yeah. That, you know, that's a, that's a great example. That's a great point because I've always went on the, I was more comfortable, I guess, with, with wallpapering it, having my logo mm -hmm. just plastered across the whole darn thing, prevent you from using it. Um, but I, I, that might set a bad tone with the, with the client. Right. I just think it's ugly, but that's me personally. No, it totally you know, is I put ugly. stuff on Instagram yeah. and stuff like that for my benefit too. Yeah. Yeah. See, when so we're I want this, clients to see it. Yeah. When we do it, when we're, we're sending direct to clients and I'll give you this example when we were actually working with a, a new uh, LSC, this, uh, so <laughs> this is crazy. This LSC corporation moved into the building next door and we thought they were just taking up one of the, little, they literally are taking the entire building. Next thing I know, there's like 32 wow. pickup trucks parked out front with magnetic signs on it. And Vic, you know what that means. You know what they're doing. Right? There's all these trucks everywhere and they're going everywhere. Uh, it's an LSC company, just a massive company. And um, yeah, I didn't, it's a big, I didn't trust them. I wanted to just, okay, here's my work. It's wallpapered. Uh, and at least it got us in the door, but I don't know, man, I was nervous with these guys thinking, man, I could just take this and I ain't got nothing to stand on. So, well, what does LSD stand for besides the obvious? Uh, Land Survey Engineering Company. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. What about like surveys? Like those citric acid or whatever that stuff oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, looks like we have another question popping up as far as like, can you search the internet for that specific metadata? Ooh. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I I've never thought about. I've never tried. Maybe we that. should all go try this, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Well, okay. So what you need, so the trick would be, is that first of all, you'd need to know what the metadata is you're searching for, and if it's changed, you'd never see it. So that's a curiosity. I'm gonna. Yeah. You know, so I, I guess the question was that you know you're talking about um, embedding a unique string of metadata in your photos. If you were to do that before you posted anything, then it, you know, are you able to go on and you knowing what the string is, search to see where your pictures show up. Yeah. It's a great, yeah. great way to do it. I have it. no idea. That's, oh, know, one thing, I, one thing I, you might not have mentioned, Jim, I, like I jumped on late, is if you upload the photo uh, to uh, Facebook, Facebook strips the metadata. Uh, no, I, I didn't. We hadn't really talked about social media yet and posting uh, that up. Yeah. So we're the, getting the, to social media. <laughs> isn't, isn't that the same, though, with... Um, with the Instagrams and the LinkedIn, no all of those, I think yeah. all of those social media platforms strip metadata. Yeah. That I don't know, but I do know Facebook does. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty universal. We've actually uh, talked about it with, um, oh gosh, there was, so, uh, there was another platform that happened just before Facebook exploded. We were talking and I learned it from one of those. MySpace. That's nice it. Face. That's oh it. Thank God. you. How old am I? No. Gray, brother Gray. I'm, a, uh, I'm afraid just know who remembers MySpace. Yeah, yeah. But we were actually talking with with some of their web developers at one point in time, and th that's where I learned that all of the social media companies do it. They don't want. Got it. Uh, yeah, they want to. They don't want you to use them to go someplace else. They want you to stay in house. Yeah. Right. And plus, it's a storage issue. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Eric has another comment. Eric, do you want to unmute, yeah, unmute that guy? 
um, maybe share some tips, tricks, and comments that you are posting. Thank you very much. Yes, for sure. <laughs> no problem. Just yeah, I don't see the I don't see the comments, so oh, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna back out with the speaking part. And just drive for a while. That boy. So, I'll careful. listen. Drive safe. Oh yeah, I'll listen. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, all right. So first of all, Jim, very good. I I I love how you just put everything in plain English. Um, I suggest people try it through the Library of Congress first. They're really nice people there. I think that when you, when you go to federal, uh, your federal office test, they give you like a, a charm test. If you pass, you go to the Library of Congress. If you fail, you go to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Because Library of Congress people, they're usually very polite. You can call them up if there's a problem with your application. They'll write you a nice letter. Hey, you blew this, that, and the other. And you call them up. Hey, I just want to try to fix this. I'm a drone photographer, it's my first time, they'll probably be really nice to you. And, and um, one of the problems with using these, these online portals is that they often won't give you the right advice. So for example, if you're filing a trademark and you want, and you're the dumbest person in the world and you wanna file a trademark for this, this name called Microsoft and computer software, if you do it through one of these online portals, they're just gonna say, sure, give me your 300 bucks, not a problem, we'll file it for you. Oh, do you want to file it in use or intend to use? Uh, you can save money if you file it in use, then you file it in use. Well, you've just made Bill Gates' case that you're infringing his trademark, and th they're not going to catch that for you. So okay. uh, that's why I don't, I, I, I've, I've charged an outrageous amount of money to try to fix things that people have done through these online portals. And sometimes I can't fix them. Sometimes the damage is done. But the second thing, uh, there, if you get a registered copyright, you've got something called statutory damages that you can hang over people's heads. And uh, it's up to $150,000 for a knowing and willful infringement. And way back when I actually used to go to court, I haven't been in court in 15 years other than to serve on a jury. Um, I refused to go to court because I refused to wear suits. But back then, I mean, you know, I had a couple of cases where we got people in the $60,000 range once because somebody stole one line from my client's website, which he had copyrighted, one, one line. And we got these guys for in the 60s. And then another time, we got somebody also in the 60s because he copied my client's packaging, which was copyrighted, and he had it one day at a trade show. So believe me, it's much easier. You start at 150 and let them talk you down. If you don't have it, you've got common law copyright. You have to prove your damages and their unjust enrichment, which, you know, in a case of a realtor, what if the realtor doesn't sell the house? Well, you know, the unjust enrichment is zero. Your damages yeah. are basically zero. So everybody knows you're not going to bring the case, but with statutory damages, attorney's fees are routinely awarded so you can just hang over the head okay we're starting at 150 you're going to pay your attorney and you're going to pay my attorney so let's let's settle in the middle okay that's that's right. basically right. all i had, so, all I had super say. um jim you mentioned earlier about seeing things thank you eric by the way um about seeing things that were kind of tweaked and changed a little bit so what if like eric's comment had made me think of this what if somebody does make some changes at what point does it become a different image yeah that's where that's where the legal uh authorities and that's where that comes in i don't know and i don't that's think mine. there is a set formula and i can tell you this much one of the things that's happened in the last four or five years that i've been aware of is this new style of fan art where where uh, a, a, a fan of a comic book creates their own comic book using all the characters likeness and it's fan art and they share it online and there's no profit from it. So I, I, I don't know at what point in time does these likenesses and does these, uh, these intellectual properties become suspect question or what's the, I don't know. Um, I, I, I know this much in the home construction world you qualify for a remodel as long as 10% of the original structure stands. I don't know what it's like on an image. I can't tell you that. I can tell you that it becomes, and, and I'm bad. Eric will tell you, it becomes a bigger question if people are making money from it versus they are just simply creating it and putting it out there. Um, if they're creating it and putting it out there, they're not making any profit from it. The problem about the only thing you'll get is a uh, opportunity to tell them to take it down. It's not authorized and cease and desist. I don't even know if they have to. I don't know what the value is. 
I can't tell you that if there's a, this might be where the jury comes in, <laughs> right, Eric? I'm, I don't know. Uh, there's not a hard, fast line um, unless it's pretty darn exact. And that's my image. All right. Looks like Eric had another comment on it. Go ahead, Eric. Transformative use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, transformative, transformative use, use is, a, is a big deal. It happens uh, to uh, some of my surf photographer clients because they'll take a picture. It'll become a fairly well-known picture, maybe makes a cover of Surfer Magazine. Then some bozo will take that, blow it up on an easel, paint basically the same thing, but put it in, say, a Picasso style, and they'll say, it's my art and my guy will say no it's my art yeah. you just transformed it but yeah. yeah if you get that if you get that bad or if you get that into that kind of a situation there, there are four main defenses against copyright infringement which include how much do they transform it they make any money out of it how much did they take what's the nature of the taking things like that basically did somebody else make money off it did they steal the whole thing and are they good people or bad people that's kind of what it comes down to right. and I don't think you want to be in a trial over whether they're good people or bad people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would not. Everyone says that they're good people. They're, uh, but yeah, if you run into the, you know, the Center for Saving the Endangered Wolves and they took one of your pictures, you're, that's probably not a lawsuit you want to bring. Yeah. Unless you hate wolves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who hates so, wolves? <laughs> I, I have to say, I'm kind of maybe in that position of, Man, I wish my art was good enough that somebody would want it. <laughs> so I'm still at that point where, man, if it was good, somebody would actually want it. <laughs> well, but consider this, consider this, that it, let, let's say it is that good and somebody does want it. Why did they want it? If they wanted a profit from you, oh man, we're talking, that's a problem. But you're, you're, you're right. Um, and the things that the, uh, I'll speak only for myself and half the 90% of the stuff that I publicly post, it's not worthy of anybody taking it. <laughs> Things that, that are worthy of copyright infringement, I probably already have an agreement with the client and I'm not sharing it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, like when, when, when I do work for hard rock hotels, you do not, well, there, I was about to say, you don't see those images, but you do. <laughs> I recently did publish a picture from a hard rock hotel shoot from years and years ago. And that's only because the hotel's gone now. Um, so, but no, there are many times where we're might have work worthy of that publication or worthy of taking it. Like mentioned earlier, I'm working for another company. They own those rights. They own those images. I'm the hired, you know, they hired me to do this. That's under hire. And I willingly give the rights to them. Yeah. They, got, they can afford better lawyers than I can. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so back on to topic. I think you had a couple more points that you wanted to showcase off of your notes there. Yeah, well, well, there's a couple of things that, um, you know, but the last point that I have here that I didn't really touch base on is that um, when you copyright something, you need to provide a copy of that creative work for copyright. So there's typically, they'll need, you know, the copyright will need a copy of it. And then you'll have at least one complete copy for yourself. If it's not been published, and if it has been published, you'll keep two copies of that. So um, when you start to get into that, process of, of filing for copyright you'll learn you'll learn about which images you'll need to have on hand uh when something's published when it's not um yeah i, I like eric that that great poise that great post uh, for the four main defense for copyright infringement yeah search that one and those four bullet reasons i think we've covered three and a half of them here um so it's again it's gonna tie back to you're gonna to have to make a decision of whether you believe that this work is worthy of copywriting because it's not free and it does take up your time and it does take up energy. And is this exposure of these images, might it result in a high likelihood of being infringed upon? A couple of those things you, you come to terms with those and you may not be copywriting. I think Vic said it really well, he has not yet done it. Um, and he's had good luck or good success in getting images removed with a cooperative effort. Um, myself, I have yet to be in that problem. I've not had a image show up somewhere else. Um, although we have 
set in and have some copyrights for specific projects. Um, client has copyrights for specific projects that so we don't even own those and we still hire uh, fly under hire and those are their rights so yeah so what about some of the paperwork behind it when you're entering into a contract with a client the paperwork or the verbiage that you should put into your own uh, contract to mm -hmm. protect them and you yep uh great great question great point um we have it specified in our service agreements um, I have one of the things that I like um, is pe some people like to work on contract. Some people like to work on service agreement. Some people like to work on scope of work. Uh, fine. I'm good with all three of those. But in all three of those environments, there's going to be a clause, a statement as to who owns the rights and what is able to be done. And this came from my lesson of learning from another client that they're selling it. We instantly made a change because it wasn't in there before. Straight up, that was something I hadn't considered. I didn't think that one of my clients would be reselling my work at a higher profit than what they were paying me, only because they had the connections, right? And in one case, you know, in one case, the, the specific one I mentioned, they were just giving it away. Well, good for them that they're giving it away. But the problem is, is that they were giving it to someone who should have been paying me, right? I should have been flying for them. Um, so putting it in a, uh, and it can be a checkbox. I own the rights, you own the rights. Uh, in that sentence, make a sentence in that work agreement that all images captured under the scope of this work agreement belong to, and put it out there, whether it's you, whether it's them. Um, some let me, companies Let me give you a little hint, Jim. Oh, sorry. I didn't sure, no, jump in, jump in. <laughs> what I do is, if you guys go to my website, mossphotography.biz, um, under, crap, something, I can't remember what it is now. I have terms and conditions. And on my invoices, I have a link because all my invoices are digital. I have a link to those terms and conditions. Yeah. And it says payment of invoice is acceptance of terms and conditions. So CYA in that aspect. And one of those terms is they may not reuse or resell any part of the image to any third party. Yeah, that's what we have now, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like it, but unfortunately for me, it was <laughs> I learned it after the fact. But that's right, a great right, that's right. a great example. You know, have your terms and conditions and make them accessible to the, mm -hmm. the clients. You don't have to specify yep. it every time. But I do like the fact that uh, paying this invoice is an acceptance of the terms and conditions. Um, that's yep. kind of a nice. And nobody grab. reads it, and nobody's ever had a problem with it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The only time it needs to be read is if it's by a lawyer. If the lawyer says it's good for you, then it's good for you. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Vic, I put in mossphotography.biz, correct? Yep. I, I -I yeah. Our, okay, I put that in our in our chat so anybody can ah, okay. put that out as well. Don't steal any of my images. Okay. <laughs> stadiums, man. Stadiums. And actually, on my website, on my website, I do not have logos on any of my website stuff. So people can screen capture that all day long, but yeah, I just, we, that's a decision I made. Yeah, same here, same here. None of our stuff on our website, I mean, the website's the logo, right? I don't have to brand my images specifically. Right. Yep. Oh. Something else, something else I do, and I, I don't know if anybody else is, if you're thinking about this, I've been talking that, because like one of my little ones is that there are no stock images on my website. And there oh, should be- Jim is always saying that. There shouldn't be any stock images on your website. <laughs> There really aren't, um, but there's multiple clients. Yeah. You know, if I've got a, you know, if I say I shoot a building for the architect, you know, contractor sees it and they might try and steal it. So yeah. um, there's always reuse. And I charge very well for reuse to secondary clients. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. So Jim, can you elaborate what you were saying about the stock images? And sure, why? sure. I, you know, I, I've heard you say it before many times. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sticking point for me, and and partially a sticking point because I'm very proud of uh, the high tech website. I'm very proud of the work we've done, um, but we're in the imagery imagery and data collab collapsion <laughs> data capture business. We take pictures for business. Why would people put stock images? And here's what I'll tell you: um, companies are smart. And if they're using your website to take a look at what you, those stock images are blatantly stock images. They're brandless, they're vanilla, they're bland, they're, blah, you know what I mean? They're just, there's nothing to them. And it's just screaming stock image. And if you're in business to sell your imaging services, 
uh, I don't know, in my opinion, you're not setting a good foot forward. And I have received uh, many, many discussion, many different points uh, when I was talking with other people uh, back in my Grossmont days um, about those types of things and everybody's professional opinion when they come across websites that are stock photography. Let's say you're going to hire a wedding photographer and you hire, you're going to hire this wedding photographer because this person is the person you want to hire, but yet all their images are stock images. You, you're not seeing anything that they did, right? That's what you want people to see. They want, you want people to, when they look for your company or they looked at that, this is what this company does. And you didn't just go buy a bunch of Shutterstock images. Um, and I, I say Shutterstock because even back to my growth my days, I used Shutterstock as an example of how many people were breaking the law. It's just crazy where people are posting videos and just uh, there, there's this one video in particular here in San Diego where the person, not anybody in my class saw this video, person takes off from Seaport Village, which is what, 300 feet from Lindbergh. And then they cross the bay right into military Delta airspace, fly over it fly over an aircraft carrier that's been, you know what I'm talking about they're flying over it and this is this image right now is available to buy on Shutterstock so uh, <laughs> what I, I it blows my mind that not only does it promote this reckless and illegal activity that people are still profiting from it and you know that guy doesn't have a 107 and he's still selling these things on Shutterstock so don't don't participate in that lack of regard to rules, procedures, laws, and, and, and how we're supposed to operate, right? Yep. Get your own images. You know what to do. Do it legally. Do it safely. You're there to promote yourself. That's right. That's so right. promote your work. It, it's and if you a, don't think it matters, if you don't think your client, you'll never know. Your client is just going to go to the next person that they're investigating. You're never, they're never going to call you up and go, you know, I was this close to hiring you until you, till I saw that stock image of blah, blah, blah. They, they don't tell you that. They do not tell you that. You get one opportunity to show how you how you operate, what your company does. You get one opportunity to make sure that you're really showing your work. Yeah. Right, right. So, all right. So we're almost up on our time. Um, I got an airplane to catch. And so um, <laughs> I, I do have a couple of announcements that I want to uh, put in there, but if anybody has, uh, any really quick, quick questions, or if you want to reach back out to us, uh, make sure you put your contact information in there. Jim, can you scroll your contact information in there? If not, I can put that in there for I you. I got it, yep. Um, and then we're down to our last three minutes, and I know a lot of people actually are getting ready to travel out. Um, or pulling into Vegas at this very second. Are you? Oh. Hey. <laughs> I get a rock. Okay. So I'll see All you guys. Right. If you're if you're at the thing, look for me. Vic, I'll see you. Right. Come by my booth, brother. All righty, take it easy. See y'all later. There. Well, there's so much excitement in the industry today because of the show going on and everything. Everybody's all excited and it's just exciting to hear everybody's travels there and communicating and finally getting to network with everybody. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, the last time we were at, uh, last time we were in Vegas, it was, a, I don't know, did anybody see the picture that uh, Tina from Drone Up posted this morning? Uh, we're going to be there. We're going to do it all that. We're all going to have masks on. So, okay. It's better than not. <laughs> <laughs> Safety I'll first. go. That's good. That's okay. Yep. Safety first. Yep. So, all right. So, because we're out of time, I'm sorry if we weren't able to address all of the questions that are popping up, but uh, Jim is always available. We've got Eric. This is networking. This is where you have an opportunity to reach out to people that are actually in the industry and have knowledge in these specific areas. And that's why it is so good to do this. Um, also, looks like Eric just po uh, popped in with another one, image search in the background. I'm sure at least someone stole that. What? <laughs> yeah. So um, try looking under uh, Google and your images and it'll pop some things up in, in there for you. Um, I, I also want to remind everybody that, yes, Women in Drones, the Women to Watch is 
at CES Vegas this year. That is amazing. So if you're not familiar with what CES is, that's the big tech show that goes on at the beginning of the year. Huge event, and we're going to be a part of it. Super exciting. Also, one more uh, thing that I want to mention is that I'm going to put this into our chat really quick. Like, um, I want to remind everybody there's an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one session with Kimberly Penn because we're all here about business, right? So go ahead and uh, enter into that link that I just uh, uh, posted for you for an opportunity to um, have a, a chance to enter to win a session with her. And so uh, don't forget to put your contact information in there and save the chat. Do you know how to save the chat? It's the, and you can, I don't know if you can do this on your phone, but if you're on your computer, there's three dots on the lower right-hand corner. And when you click on that, you can save the chat. So right now, can everybody go put their information in there really quick, right? Start typing. Start Let's typing and we'll save it. Yes. I'm even going to do it. Okay, because I hope you catch you reach out to me. I love talking with everybody here. Okay, so there it goes. There goes mine. Okay, so I just want to thank everybody. Thank you, Jim, for talking with us today and sharing. It's straight up 10 o'clock. Don't forget to say the chat. And I hope to see everybody at, at Commercial UAV today. All right, bye. See you next Thanks, week. Thanks, everybody. That kind of wraps it up.